Hey everyone, it's Jilly. Today we'll be making peanut butter banana bread. I used to love peanut butter and banana sandwiches as a kid, so I really wanted to make a dessert with peanut butter and bananas. And this is the best peanut butter dessert I've had in a while. So let's get started. So of course you may use your favorite peanut butter. Mine is this one right here. I like it chunky, and since there's some oil at the top, I like to give it a quick mix before serving it. You want to try and use ripe bananas. Make sure they have some freckles. That's when they're best for baking. I peeled them and set them aside. In a bowl, you want to combine the all-purpose flour, baking powder, baking soda, and salt, and give everything a little whisk. In my stand mixer goes in the softened, unsalted butter and peanut butter. You want to mix that together, and you can definitely use a handheld mixer for this. And if you want to use a rubber spatula and bowl to make this entire recipe you may do so just make sure the butter is really softened at room temperature i added the brown sugar some vanilla extract and the three bananas you can slice the bananas or throw them in whole doesn't really matter everything will mix in together now when I think of bread, I think dry. Bread is delicious, but it's dry. So years back when people would talk about banana bread, I'd just think, oh, that's probably dry, I'll pass. When I tasted it, I loved it. And if you try this recipe, you will love it. It might look like bread, but it tastes nothing like bread. All right, so I added the eggs one by one, mixed it for about 10 seconds, and then you want to start pouring in the flour. So most of the time when I bake, unless I'm feeling really lazy, I always start with the dry ingredients and finish with the dry ingredients. So in this case, I added some flour, poured in some buttermilk, added more flour, poured in the remaining buttermilk, and then I added the remaining flour. And that helps the batter become super light and fluffy and prevents you from over mixing as well. And if you've noticed, this recipe is just basically mixing ingredients together and then baking it, super simple. And I'm pretty sure you have most of the ingredients right at home. I know I probably will get some questions about using this batter for a cake or cupcakes instead, and that's a great question, but unfortunately, I haven't tried it out to know if it will go well with a frosting. So this part is really important. Make sure to scrape the sides and bottom of the bowl and mix it in. I placed some parchment paper in my loaf pan. I greased the sides and bottom so the bottom and sides don't get too dark. You want to pour in all of the batter and spread it out evenly with your spatula. I poured some semi-sweet chocolate chips on top. And now this is what makes this peanut butter banana bread extremely delicious. If you leave out the chocolate chips and end up not liking this, you can't blame me. I am telling you, this is what makes it super delicious. Okay, so I baked this in a preheated oven at 350 degrees for about 50 minutes. I know I usually tell you to let cakes and other desserts to cool completely, not this one. I had a slice of this while it was still warm and I can never advise you to eat this cold after having a warm slice. Vanilla ice cream on the side won't be a bad idea either. This was my favorite slice. I'm not a fan of the edges. They tend to be crispier. I prefer moist. The chocolate chips weren't melted, but they were warm. And the minute you took a bite of this, it all just kind of melts in your mouth. If you have all of these ingredients at home, I highly recommend you giving this a try. I love this so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you all so much for watching.